Hello, everybody. You can kill me with the magical blunder buff. My name is the Lightbringer, <laughs> and you're listening to the Bunsen Burner Recordings Podcast, episode 25. This is going to be a good one, ladies and uh, gentlemen. I feel like we hey, don't dudes. use the term blunderbuss often enough. Well, magical, you can kill me with a magical blunderbuss. You guys remember in Donkey Kong Country 2, I think, at the end of the uh, game when you're fighting King K. Rule, he's got a blunderbuss that shoots this magic gas out of it. That's that's where you're on the pirate ship, right? Or am I thinking of the first game? The first one is on a pirate ship, yeah. The second one is in his weird lair. I think it's still in a pirate outfit, though. I don't think I ever played that one. I, I remember the first one because my friend Robert always plays that song with the visual. The one that's like... <laughs> and then King K. Rule, he, when he gets hit, he goes... Oh, oh, oh. I just remember Robert playing that while Levi's like pass out in the car and he's making the noises to Levi as he's like asleep. <laughs> he's like dancing around going, oh. So let oh, me you tell can, you. You can imagine that. Donkey Kong Country 2 is better in every way. And one of them has, it says, so they kept that same sound bite oh, for some of the oh. uh, monsters. But one of the other like reptiles, when you hit them, it has more of a French accent going, oh. and that was, oh. I would go out of my way to get those guys because the sound is hilarious. When you hit, when Diddy Kong gets hit, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. And then when when you on Mario Kart Double Dash, when you're playing as Peach or Daisy, and you switch the switch their seats, Daisy goes. Hi, I'm Daisy. Yes, <laughs> I would always. You know, any Mario Kart where you can play as Daisy, I play as Daisy. Hi, I'm Daisy. <laughs> and then the, there was another one I was just thinking of. Um, who the hell was it? I just oh, like whenever oh, whenever Toad gets hit. Whoa! No! I think it's uh, I think it was uh, now I just lost it. Oh, Kirby! I forget if it's it's in Smash Brothers or what. But Kirby goes hi. Yeah, I think that was Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, you press like the yeah the, that was the taunt right that trigger was the taunt. and they can, yeah, yeah the taunt. There you go. And if anybody knew what that blunderbuss thing was, that was uh, that was Oni plays doing an impression of Linkara. If there's any Oni plays. Um, fans out there i'm sure there are guys go to google and look up linkara running he's like this um fedora kind of guy fedora video game reviewer kind of dude from his past well f from youtube <laughs> you see him linkara yeah. the light bringer he looks amish yeah he did some kind of like I, I think him and zach hadel from smiling friends did some kind of like bit where they were saying that linkara was at a trump rally or something and then trump like Gets the security to, to kick him out. He's like, get him out of here. Get him out. Take his jacket. <laughs> Take his jacket. Something like that. Well, you've probably heard from the uh, Radio Free Innsmouth uh, thing, Paul, where, where they do the Trump, um, that, like, sample. He goes, it'll be out when it's out. And we like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Zach Hadel doing Trump. <laughs> doing Trump or doing Linkara. I don't know. It, it, it's confusing. <laughs> but it's pretty good. I was just, like, totally binging, um, like, Oni Plays the legend of zelda wind waker or whatever mm. and he kept doing these link car impressions it was just i don't know man i couldn't help myself just laughing my ass off he's uh he gets hit by like some bomb by one of the bosses he goes oh did you really need to explode me into a million pieces <laughs> <laughs> i just thought that was good but uh yeah what, what have you guys been up to besides uh watching oni plays i watched the first two episodes of the new Frasier. Me, I would just watch the first one. I, I. Me too. I watched the first one. The second one, you have to get Paramount Plus, right? Because I watched the first one on YouTube. Oh, I, I already have YouTube. Paramount Plus. <laughs> no, I watched it by other means. Mm. <laughs> but did uh, you love it? I liked it more than I thought I would. Ooh. Oh. I, you know, I went in with very low expectations. <laughs> <clears throat> Frasier is still Frasier. He still acts like Frasier. He still says frasier -y things, so I was happy with that. The new cast, I'm still a little split on. Freddy, I think, is going to grow on me. I'm kind of okay with him and his not-girlfriend. I'm I like her, too. That's fine. The professor guy, what is it, his name? Cornwall? Corny? He's <laughs> great. I like him. The one I don't like is... Frazier's nephew, and I forget his name now. David, yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought you were going to say the black woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was funny. 
But David yes. is just like he's trying too hard to be Niles. Yeah. I could do it. Everybody knows him. Niles is actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, it was funny. I liked it. The second episode puts a lot more gives it a lot more direction, I find, so I think that that's worth watching. So yeah, I'd say so far, good job on it. Thought the professor's eyes were too close. <laughs> they They're they really definitely close together. are. They yeah, definitely kind of, are. Kind of more like. <laughs> what do you think, Paul? Because I it's not for me. I can't. I can't do it. I mean, I think I can. I can get through it just because I you want wanted, to. I want. I'm, I don't know if I want to. You know, that's that's. This is what we're gonna get. You know, I I want to get through it. You know, it's not like I have a alternate uh, Frasier uh, reboot where it's better you know this is all we got and i like fraser enough to to get through it but i know it won't be as good as you know the middle series because i'm barely i barely got to where fraser is at in cheers in season three <laughs> and he's oh, where, he, where he's the uh where he's kind of uh-huh. like the, the bad guy yeah uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh sam <laughs> she is like a monsoon uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, I got right. got to him where he's the 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 better counterpart to Diane and Sam. <laughs> I wonder if people reacted to the Fraser spinoff the same way we're reacting to the third Fraser act, because like everyone's like, "Oh my God, Fraser with a whole new cast! What the hell?" But I mean, when the Fraser series started, none of the Cheers cast came back into there. So yeah, just the. Uh... Just their appearances. It's not even about that for me. Yeah. I, I I would be an asshole even if it was the same cast. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's just the truth. I'm sorry. But some of the original cast are going to come back for at least guest spots, right? <clears throat> Yay! Like, uh, Roz is coming back. Lilith is coming back. And the entire... Most of the Cheers cast is still alive. I'm sure they could drop in, too. Yeah, they dropped in in Frasier. Yeah, exactly. And they were old. <laughs> yeah. And now yeah, they're, they're older. older. Yeah, now they're going to all look like Frasier. Now they're 30 <laughs> years older. Yeah. If they can bring Ted Danson back, that'd be great. Oh, hey there, uh, Cliffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he used to have a nickname in high school. Uh, they used to call me Courteous Cliff. Courteous <laughs> Cliff? <laughs> he's, he's like, I didn't have one, so I had to make my own one. <laughs> That's quite a nickname. <laughs> he dances with that lady all night. Yeah, that was a weird one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. His intel really came out on that one. <laughs> he's like, Why, was oh. he so nervous? No, he was just like, oh, there's just not enough. Uh, I just don't like the the broads up here. He's all down south, though. He's all that's where they're at. They were all over me in Florida. Yeah, he's like <laughs> making excuses. Yeah, <laughs> they were all over me, and they're like, what mosquitoes? <laughs> oh, laugh track goes off. Yeah. <laughs> It is I fun finally, to see a, a a sitcom with a laugh track again because I feel like all a lot of the modern comedy shows don't have the live audience sort of thing. So even notorious. just watching it feels like a total thor- a total throwback. It's weird. Well, Big Bang, no, didn't that have it the whole time? <clears throat> yeah, but that was yeah, terrible. it did. Yeah, that was like yeah, that was like Onimus when you fucking watch it without it, like on the YouTube. Edits. Yeah, it's like <laughs> when, when, yeah, when you watch like sitcoms without the uh, the laugh track, it's scary. <laughs> Feels like something horrible is gonna happen. Yeah, it's just like you know, big, big Bang Theory. I, I liked it for like one and a half episodes. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm like, I'm done. That's did not enough. like it at all, Vince. Sorry. <laughs> I like the Big Bang Theory for the same reason that I like iCarly, just because it's like colorful and it keeps my attention. It's not very good. But uh, it's there, and I can watch it, and you know I can laugh at maybe something stupid, and there you go. I mean, if you want, if you want colorful and something that keeps your attention, you just get a pinwheel. At least it doesn't have to deal with all the annoying voices of all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> the voices, I hear voices. <laughs> oh my God, Sheldon! Fred just yeah, told me I... to buy a pinwheel. <laughs> he was funny again. Oh, Doctor like Do- Sheldon and a half, Cooper. And then I'm like, no. <laughs> Young Sheldon. Hey, have you guys seen Young Sheldon? Because I haven't. And he just Bender like was telling me how much she loves Young Sheldon. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> she was dead serious. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? She goes, yeah, it's really great. It's all, it's great. <laughs> like, all right. 
And then her and Vince start talking about the Big Bang Theory. I'm like, all right, oh, I'm just no. going to sit here and eat some radishes. <laughs> gotta go. Yeah, gotta <laughs> go. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I, I finally got around to listening to that Astaroth demo. The uh, the Norwegian one from 95. Oh, yeah? What yeah, solid, solid shit. I know you picked that as a uh, intro a while back. Yeah, the the vocals are wild on that. Yeah, it's almost like uh, like uh, like pre fucking depressive kind of black metal, it's like crying shit baby vocals. <laughs> <laughs> the violin and stuff in there. No, it's a it's a good demo. I have not been able to stop listening to Blood for like weeks now. Oh, yeah. Turn on the fucking grindcore kick. Yeah. I only have two albums, but oh my god, they're good. I need to get the rest. I know the rest, but I own two. They're all more or less kind of the same, aren't they? But but all pretty solid. Yeah, like they didn't deviate too much from what uh from that style, but the two that I own, um O Agios Pethane and Gas Flames Bones they're very much in the same style but the the production is very different on the two and it uh, makes it feel different even if it's not tremendously different from a songwriting perspective yeah, they yeah they just, the vocals were cool they, too the whispers they, they go hard though Jesus Christ like those albums don't let up at all yeah I was, I've only listened to Impulse to Destroy and Gas Flame Bones I haven't listened to anything in between but that uh, believe... third album looks pretty good yeah, the third, that's Agios Bethane, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's my favorite so far. It, it's incredible that Gas Flames Bones is their sixth album. I know, like that's most, all I was looking at. I was like, it was fucking, 90, what, 99? <laughs> yeah. But like, most bands at that point would have fizzled out and just be releasing fairly boring crap. But no, man, it, it rips. Yeah, they know, know what to do. <clears throat> I have not heard up. the newest one, though, from 2017. How about the split with Incantation? Blood Incantation? <laughs> I have not heard that, but that was amazing that they agreed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they just do a split with, like, Nunslaughter, too? Or my crazy? Yeah, they did. Yeah. I heard some of that. Both sides are pretty good. And that Fester uh, album you were oh, showing silence? us through, did they pull it like that? Yeah, yeah that one's like whispered yeah. vocals. You've heard it before or no? Yeah, Jub covered it a long time ago. I think maybe that's where I first heard it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just... It's really weird. Yeah, Greek yeah. shit. Towards the end, it, they... Well, they do, like, weird weird rhythm parts with, like, the Greek melodies that, like, make it stand out a little bit more from, like, you know, just palm-muted. They're, like, doing, like, triplet ones and shit like that. Yeah, I noticed they don't have a whole lot of the yeah, jiggy, 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 they don't do a lot of that, but yeah. but there's still like a ton of um like just, 80s heavy metal. Yeah, like the there. first mm-hmm. riff off that album is just like straight fucking heavy metal and shit. It's sick. It, it's really interesting. I mean, they too. never got brought like, up either. Yeah, they, they they seem to be getting brought up more and more nowadays. Where Oh, really? Like, I haven't I Yeah, haven't yeah. Whereas more. like 5 years ago, I I never heard anybody mention them ever now with like instagram and with fucking radio free and smith i've been seeing them pop up all over the place hmm. seeing people just talking about fester all the time you hashtagging them or what no nah, i ain't hashtagging <laughs> them <laughs> feverishly hashtagging <laughs> i was gonna tell you guys i'm on painkillers too so if i start to like doze off just just fucking bear with me <laughs> hey, Ernie, dan, repair what did you think dan dan I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I was telling Paul before the show, I think no Fred caught a little bit. I, I had a hernia repair surgery. I had a fucking hernia in my balls, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Paul, you had the same thing too, didn't you, like years ago? Yeah, I had it a couple years ago. And I've had that four years before I got it. Not for four years, but for like two or three years before I got it repaired. <laughs> I know, so did I, dude. I like put it off. Yeah, the, the silent huh. suffering. <laughs> Silent suffering. I, I've been, I've so, been hearing so like hang on. other let, guys let, having let, these. Let, let, let me get this straight. So for like two or three years ago, I just had this throbbing pain in your balls. No, no, it's not no. even a pain. It's not. There's no pain. It's just. It's just. Oh. It's just a, a lump. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And you just like. I, okay. I've not. I have not had the uh, the privilege of experiencing 
a, a ball hernia. Is it a an ball hernia or a ball's hernia? hernia? It's called an, a lingual hernia. It's it's like in your pube area, but it can go into your sack. Yep. Hmm. Just uh, lift up all your CDs. You'll probably get one. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lift up all your CDs. <laughs> What a weird place to go. <laughs> just, let's say lift a keg or something. <laughs> it makes sense. You have a lot of CDs, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but... Just trying to illustrate uh, to uh, the audience, Shannon. Lift a ca- try lifting your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my You're pop weird. was telling me, like, somebody I he like knows it. in the Never swap had that, too. Yeah, my, my cousin's boyfriend has that right now, and he's, he doesn't want to go to the fucking... To, to get it worked on. That's how it goes. You just gotta go in two three years and you're good you're like don't you're like don't touch my balls and then you're like okay i I have to and then they shave you down and they uh well it's basically like your intestine right yeah yeah they just kind of just pop it back in there it just goes through like some muscle and shit i was gonna tell you (laughs) because i didn't know what kind of surgery you have but you mentioned on friday and i was gonna be like oh uh take a pic of the scar so we can get a carcass cover (laughs) i could still do that (laughs) Well, uh, I still have the tape. I still have the tape on the, on the, uh, on the on the scars or on the fucking incisions. Yeah, you don't got the dissolvable. Uh... No, I do. <laughs> okay. No, I, I have the I have the dissolvable. Uh, what do you call it? Um, stitches. Yeah. Yeah, I got that, but they're not dissolved yet. That's gonna. Uh, they said it said yeah. to like wait for the tape to fall off. Yeah. It said it'll just fall off on its own. <laughs> just like a leaf <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> yep. It's like it's like your labia falling on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I mentioned um, I'll probably have to wait a little because you're not supposed to like lift anything. I'm like, can I lift a guitar? Can I play the guitar? Can I like strain myself? I don't know. We'll just do it later. Yeah, putting off the recording another while. Yeah, my balls healed. Then um, if we can get back to recording and uh, get back to our lives. Yeah, because we got a business. Got to write Galicia mm-hmm. now. Still, got a well. Three months now? Yeah, we're only a month behind. It's not a big deal. And plus, it's not like we have a deadline. Yeah. Gotta see if everyone else is uh, done with theirs, too. <laughs> um, I think Thermatogy is working on his. Dungeon Servant told me he fired his drummer, so they're not giving us a song. Um, oh, Othlon is giving us a song. He posted about it on Facebook. Nice. Oh, cool. And, uh... Boros? I think... I, I I think I forgot to to message them, Oof. and I just yeah sorry, and I <laughs> I know I messaged them a long time ago, but I I forgot to message them like within the last week. Oh okay, so they they have known about it. Man, that Othlon album was really good. I really enjoyed that. Mhm. Othlon Facebook post, my god. <laughs> I saw they opened for Volcano, didn't they? That's awesome. Yeah yeah they did open for Volcano. That's good exposure. Spin King, they opened for Volcano and uh, Possessed, too. Yeah. Down there in Florida. Those are not small names. No, it, well, it seems like it, it seems like it's kind of, like, getting easier for bands to open for bigger bands nowadays. I, I don't know if it's, like, pay to play or what kind of shit is that. Yeah, it was Because I remember, um, Paul, when we, um, when we were going to play, remember we were going to open for Three Inches of Blood, like, a long, <laughs> long time ago? Yeah. But we didn't want to do that. Or, I think we actually did it, didn't we? Didn't no. we raise the money? I don't... I think we Pomona? did raise the money. And then Jason, like, backed out. Yeah, in Pomona. Is that what right? happened? The glass house? It was, like, near the glass house, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that. Damn. Huh. <laughs> yeah, we were, like, right there all set up. Yeah, we were there. Up. And then Jason's like, oh, uh, I can't go. And then Anthony's like, well, I'm not playing. I'm like, you fucking bastards. You make me do this. <laughs> you, look, you do this to me. <laughs> With my hernia, come on, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking killing me. You would do this to a herniated person? <laughs> Yeah, you would you wouldn't hit a guy with a hook, would you? <laughs> oh, and, and I saw uh, Unblessing's gonna be opening for Demon Sea this month. Yeah, they're they're all over the place. These guys they open for fucking Verathron too. Oh damn, that's good. And what's his? I saw the the guy from Unblessing when we saw fucking Baxaxa. Yeah. Fucking uh, Ramos, he was there. Yeah, you said you were talking to him now. Yeah, he liked my Zisma T-shirt. <laughs> I don't get a slaughter lord T-shirt. He's like, what's that? I don't think I've heard on Blessing yet. They're I think I've I've mentioned them on the show before. They're like they're like blasphemy but with fucking D beats. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, from what I heard. 
And Paul's not really a war metal guy at all, so that's like, you know, saying something. Yeah, select few of the, the goat lords that I like, but, uh, you know, interesting war metal, I, I lean towards more than the traditional. Well, the traditional war metal is done to death, right? And so many bands don't do it well. Yeah. Is it that bands don't do it well, or is it that, that style is just kind of like been beaten to death? Probably both. I've heard my fair share of bands that just make a racket and call it war metal and it doesn't really do anything. And yeah, there are bands that do it really like well. like the noise like, aspect in there. Yeah. And then there's bands that do it really well, like Proclamation. Like, they they pull it off really well. It's quality stuff, but, I mean, there's not a lot of variety from album to album, so it's not, like... I, I like Proclamation. I like all four albums, but if you play any given album of theirs, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, I feel the exact same way. I like them, too, but, yeah, I wouldn't be able to distinguish uh, probably anything that they do. I think if I sat down, like really, like listened to them and paid attention, I would, I would be able to. But it's, I don't feel like I need to. It's almost you like probably have a to lot hyper of war focus metal. on one album to be able to like distinguish. Yeah, a lot of times war metal, I don't really listen to for the riff so much as the feeling of chaos. It's almost like ambient music in that sense. Hmm. Yeah, I Sometimes that I, I get that. I mean, that's what like tetragrammaton is for. But when it comes to like. You know, like Proclamation, I'm actually still listening for the riffs. It's not really like an ambient thing for me at, at that point, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, Tetragamma side, like they, you know, they had that noise aspect in it, so that makes sense. Well, they don't anymore. Now they're like in some kind of technical, brutal death metal territory. Yeah, apparently there was like some drama with like whoever did the drums for them. Like, I guess they like copied and pasted the drums from like another project onto the, onto the Tetragamma side. <laughs> like... <laughs> new album and then they just uh, like got called out for that i guess it's like a guy who does a bunch of just you know drum programming for bands and he's like basically took the midis and gave it to tetragramma side i don't know if it was like the drum patterns were already given or if like you know they arranged them to fit the songs i don't know what came first but it says that's much as i uh, know about that are you saying they took it from another album? Is that what you mean? So you can get like the MIDI files from like a, an album that the same programmer did and just like copy pasted it basically with like new textures on it for Tetragramma side to use. And like, I guess they changed the fills a little bit and, you know, added the the right like syncopation on certain, on certain riffs and shit to make it a little bit more unique. But the guy whose album it was taken from, I guess like noticed it right away. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he heard it. Like, did, did somebody sh- share it with him or what? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I think it was. How did like, you hear about that? I didn't hear about that. On the Terminus Discord, people oh. were discussing that. Yeah, that was a while ago, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know how I feel about their new music, anyways. Did you guys hear the the new Nuclear Hammer demo? I guess. No. Is is there something out yet? They've. Uh, it's, Nuclear War now will be releasing it on some physical format, presumably vinyl. Um, but it's on uh, Bandcamp, I think. And it's a couple rehearsal tracks from their upcoming album. Now, I'd heard um, a God rehearsal damn, of fucking most fourteen of minutes their long. Album. Yep, but you know what? It's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good album. Roman was the, uh, um, saying he's heard them rehearse and he said it's uh, pretty good stuff. Yeah, new direction, right? He said it was like like disembowelment. Is what he was saying. Hmm. I think they are they take <laughs> Serpentine, um, Hermetic Lucifer, and kind of run with it but add a bit more a bit more to it and that's uh i thought serpentine was a fantastic album such a huge step forward from what they were doing before yeah yeah it is pretty good uh where are you guys seeing the new one i don't see that it's just right there on uh metal archives on their the last um you know release yeah, right there oh, okay. the, the next album is gonna be called band camp. the next album is gonna be called chaos void um chaos spelled with an x and the demo or rehearsal that they released is like chaos with an x and then another word that i don't remember how to pronounce artworks kind of remind me of like antediluvian type of stuff or oh, like uh, my- mitochondrian a little bit oh yeah i could see that it kind of reminds me also of um <laughs> watain lawless darkness has kind of a spiraling void in the middle hmm. i actually do know that one i think true christian like that <laughs> <laughs> watain and behexen fans i would call it my butt either. for his glory <laughs> <laughs> that that was the album where I kind of like Behexen's uh, blessing is fantastic. 
Uh, Ritual's pretty good too. Um, by the blessing. Yeah, I like Ritual. That's the one I like. Or um, Glory. Oh, I remember this one. The Blessing of Satan. Paul, you had that back patch, didn't you? Let me see. Um... Don't even remember, huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, at least he's honest about it. See, he's not a poser. <laughs> It's being honest. When you're honest, you can't. It's impossible to be a poser. <laughs> the Hexen split with Horn. I was fantastic, though. That's my probably my favorite the Hexen material. I don't think I've heard this. I've I've heard the the Horn, um, where it kind of sounds like Blink One Eighty Two or something. What the hell is the name of that album? Wait, what? The, oh, the, uh, the two thousand five album Envet Envetnags Eflos. Solf es cantavane. It's got like a, it's got like a fucking witch casting a spell on it, like some fucking rolled up parchment thing. Yeah, I have that yeah. Yeah, there's like a there's like a Blink One Eighty Two type of song on there. I'm gonna have to listen to it. Really like emotional oh, hey, cool. sounding stuff. It, I never that's not, is that a normal I'm, thing? I'm, re I'm reading the uh, probably just normal for uh, finished saying... black metal now. Yeah, probably. So that album in Van Nagzaflossol Flum Lila. Yes. I didn't know this. I'm reading the additional notes on archives, reading only odd letters from beginning or from the end. The title is Evangels of Satan. Evangels of Satan. The track one is called it translates to the Toad of Anger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell? That's pretty cool. <laughs> what is this? Japanese black metal? Hello my baby, hello my honey. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, my heart's on fire. Horna, I have not kept up with, with their latest albums. When yeah, Clovis I only left. know that one album. Like this, you remember that guy, Lord Mold, Paul? Yeah. I I remember he was friends with Matt, and like he met he he let Matt borrow uh, a few CDs, and I remember that Horna one was in there. That was the first time I had ever heard of him. He had Horna, and he had um that like DSBM band, Nictalgia. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. The one the one where the guy has like a gun in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I remember we had those two CDs in there. I think you might have had Ergahol in there, too. Hmm. The one with the gun in the mouth, isn't that Shining? No, no, it, it's Nictalgia. I don't know if Shining has a similar album cover they might, but I, I've never really uh, paid much attention to, to Shining. Oh, that one. Okay. I don't think I've ever really looked at the cover of the first album. I have the second album, but I've never really seen the first album cover. Okay, that's butt ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had that, and I think he had Ergahol in there. Urgo had some good stuff. I actually checked out like their first couple albums, uh, or the the demo and then the first two albums recently. I don't know why it just kind of came up, but uh, it, it's pretty solid stuff. After that, they get a little bit too, I don't know, like cheesy. I usually don't have a yeah. problem with that, but when it's that kind of black metal cheese, um, I, I I don't I don't I don't want to deal with it anymore. <laughs> I really like, like even the even good. the later uh, Carpathian Forest stuff was pretty good, like the Submit to Satan album and shit like that. But uh, I don't know for some reason Black Shining Leather. I, I can't get into it. I I like Black Shining Leather, even though it was really different from what came before. Like they're they're black doomy kind of demos, and uh, I guess the EP, which are demo tracks, but those were amazing. Some of my favorite Norwegian black metal demos. Um, but Black Shining Leather was like a completely different band. This album that like I was punky. talking about, it was, yeah, it had yeah, a it sense of humor, which was weird. But I, I still like that one though. It's the one that came out, the ones that came after that I I, I can't really get into as much. I actually like the 2006 uh, Carpathian Forest album, Fuck You All. I don't know if that one's popular. I, I never at, at really all, got into I, that I, one. I like it. It was the one before that, Defending the Throne of Evil, that actually had some tracks I I really liked. But yeah. Well, at this point, when I listen to Carpathian Forest, it's usually the, uh, what the fuck's it called? The demo with the Bloodlust and Perversion. That's it. That has the, uh, the demos on it. That's where I usually go to. That's the old, uh, 92 demo as well? Yeah, it has, yeah, yes, yeah, same, uh, same title. Oh, okay. But the, uh, the compilation has that demo, Journey Through the Cold Moors, uh, and I, something else. I think we like rehearsal tracks or something. Paul, where are you? I think Chasm Caves. I'm here. Paul? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard from him for a while. I'm like, what the hell's going on over there? I was just thinking. I was like, <laughs> you would, you, would you put, uh, like, Craft in the same boat as that? Penny for your thoughts. Kinda. Total soul rape, Craft. and Craft. it made me think of it like, fuck the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of like, that kind of like, fuck you, black metal. <laughs> 
Yeah, total propaganda. Yeah, total soul rape. That's all. I haven't uh, actually, I haven't actually I heard this stuff in such a long time, but I yeah. heard Jub liked Kraft. Is, yeah, is Kraft same. any good? I don't even remember. I, I liked Terror Propaganda. What is this, like third, Rape, third wave black metal and shit? Yeah, pretty much. So that's coming out in the 2000s. No, they, they were around for a long time. I don't think they actually they ever put out anything till like their first album, maybe a demo before that. But they have a demo they around since like the mid mid nineties. I think you're talking Says, about Carpathian Forest. So we were talking about Kraft. With a, yeah, like ninety nine was their first. Um, yeah, recording. but they were around for years before that, though. Oh really? Oh yeah, it says yeah. unreleased demo ninety seven. So there you go. The only album like <laughs> c- cover that's drawing me in is the first one, Total Soul Rape. <laughs> the other ones. You, you really don't like terror terror propaganda? Just like a mirror image of uh, Transylvanian hunger? Uh, not so much. The lips look <laughs> weird. <laughs> There's yeah, a really like great track on that album though called uh, "Hidden Under the Skin." That's some good riffs on there. All right, I'll check that out. I think I like the white noise and black metal cover. Yeah, we're <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I like the cover, but I've never, I haven't heard anything past "Fuck the Universe." Yeah, me either. White noise. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that looks like. That sound, it sounds like it would be a Thanti Faxeth uh, album title. This mm. looks like a poster that a fucking like. What do you even call? What do you call that movie? This looks like a poster that a, a Nightmare Before Christmas girl would have in her room. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like. So it looks sick. Like an Invader Zim girl. <laughs> so it looks sick. Yeah, it looks pretty sick. You could say that. This from Target. <laughs> it's like the Amen one where he said that was like a hot topic poster. <laughs> it is. That's it's a, from the Alchemy Gothic series of posters. <laughs> That's why I think there's an A on the uh, on the chair that he's sitting on. Now I need to look it up because I don't remember if there's an A on it or not. And you could throw catharsis in that <laughs> boat too. But they got, uh, I like the their 2006 album probably the best. I haven't heard like their debut or much of the demos or anything from catharsis. Which was 2006? Is that from, nah. World Without World End? Without yeah, end, what's it? it called? World Without End is good. World Without End is almost like like sadistic execution or something. Yeah, it's fucking wacky. Yeah, that one's I good. really liked Cruise. I like World Without End. That one's probably my second favorite, but my favorite is Crucifixion. Oh, right before. It's a really weird, thin, tinny vibe to it. Also, it's like that uh, Hemlock uh, uh, album where they got untitled interludes <laughs> in the Lust for Fire. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I listened to that last night too. That one's really good. Reminding me uh, of the. Uh, a better, uh, better production than like Dawnfall, but still pretty raw. Are you talking about the Red album that I was uh, sending? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. That one was really good. I, I didn't know exactly who to, um, who to compare it to, but it, it, it totally sounds like USBM. It's like, it's like yeah. if Acheron, Acheron was more black metal or something. I don't exactly know who to, who to compare it to. I just thought it was really cool. Yeah, instead of the guitars missing like the Dawnfall, it was like the drums. <laughs> so he wears the beat at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you mostly think, get like uh, a really digital sounding guitar, right? Yeah. The first album was a bit more balanced, Funeral Mask, and I really like that one. Again, very, very USBM. It, it couldn't be anything else. Oh, yeah, that, that one was label, pretty though. weird. That's weird. I, the, the album cover was kind of weird on that one, though, but the music was pretty good. Yeah, it is. I think what makes the album cover weird is like the two white bars on the side. If it wasn't for those white bars and it was just like the like the wood kind of color with the face in the middle, it'd be a bit more. All right, yeah, I, I could see that. All right, yeah, I can I can work with this. Yeah, some borders. <laughs> yeah, I like the label name Head Not Found. Yeah, that was an important it's label like a for fucking, uh, Head Not Found. Oh yeah, they got some Gehenna, Ragnarok, Third and Immortal, oh, one hundred twenty-two stuff on there. Bunch of fucking over Vindia. Who's Carp- the, um, of- yeah, that was the label owned by Metallion. Mm. Oh, this was on this label was Metallion. Yep. Ooh. This Carpe Mortem or this Carpe Tenebrum album looks kind of cool. The one with like the spider legs uh, coming out of the chick. No, it's a spider screwing a chick. Oh, it's a spider screwing yeah. a chick. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a member or members of Demo Borger in there. It's actually pretty good. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I want to check this out. There is a reissue of that album with some of the ugliest fucking artwork I've ever seen. This artwork is approaching ugly, but I still kind of like it. Let's see, 2001. Yeah, check check out the reissue. I don't know what year it's from, but... Is it the green one? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it looks pretty stupid. I got the 
fuck is that? It looks like whose an idea eyeball. was this? They blurred out like, the. It looks like a blurred out face I, in, in an eyeball or vagina or something. I don't even know what this is. Yeah, it looks like an eyeball <laughs> or like an egg or something. But they blurred that, but not the. What is that? It's not bestiality. It's like insect insectuality. <laughs> <laughs> Arachnality. Look at the uh, the cover for the second album too. It's just as bad. It's fucking hideous. The reissue or this purple one? Uh, no, first original issue of the second album. I don't know if they bother reissuing that one. It's fucking. <laughs> the purple one. It, it just looks kind of lazy. I don't know. Nothing symmetrical. Oh God! Look at the third one. <laughs> uh, that yeah. one actually bothers me less. It looks like a bad video game for like the PC in like 2002. It looks like the yeah, eyes in the, the back or whatever. It's like, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you just woke him up from a nap. <laughs> yeah, that that thing is the final boss of the game, and the mouth is like the the frame where it's screaming before the fight starts. <laughs> There's some interesting stuff on this label here. I'm looking at a band called Disgusting. And they have an album oh, called yeah. The Shapeshifter Blues, and none of it's spaced. <laughs> I remember that. It looks like something I'd like. I mean, it has tits on it and, like, a swirly space thing with, like, the Japanese fucking, what do you call it, thingy on the side. The the first Ragnarok album was on there, and the one, I don't know if you guys have seen the... the gun, right? That's the one with the lemmings. Yes, the lemmings. Okay. Oh, I can't unsee that. That's just such a bad cover. I don't know what they were thinking. I kind of Good like album. It. Bad cover. Yeah, you would. Oh, look at this. Look at, uh, is this the band? Enslavement of Beauty? You know who that is? Uh, I remember, I recognize the name. I'm looking up, they're, on... they're on, uh, they're on Head Not Found. Paul, look at the Enslavement yeah. of Beauty album cover. Megalomania. <laughs> a baby. A baby. A baby with the stupid goth artwork in the back. Kind of hate that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, even the, this. even the font is going, going goth. Ragnarok. Stigmir, Hellish Blasphemy. Well, that's just a regular black metal cover there, isn't it? And then we have Watamez with Soul Fuel. And this looks uninteresting. <laughs> it just looks uninteresting. Their album, their band picture looks uninteresting too. They just look like hikers. Watamez. Their first album in 1997 is called Kinky Bastard. This is kind of an interesting fucking album cover. Paul, look this up. Album is called Kinky Bastard. <laughs> what the fuck kind of cover is this? Mm, cheeky bastard. <laughs> is this? What is this? It's kind of scary. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like a black guy with like pantyhose on his head, and his eyes are blurred out, and then it looks like somebody's holding both ends of the pantyhose, so they look like horns. Yeah. It's quite frightening stuff. <laughs> Kinky bastard. Song titled "Drag Queen Barbie." <laughs> So there's oh. that. 1993, they have a demo called What a Mess, and it looks like a fucking Ziggy comic strip or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. What the fuck is this? Is this a thrash band? Heavy thrash. Oh, that guy looks like, uh, I forget what that comic book artist's name, something Larson. Oh, well, this, this band does have somebody in it. It's got the guy from Godsend, that, uh, like, doom metal band, Holy Records, if you remember that. Oh, and In the Woods, too. He's, he's from In the Woods? Yeah. Weird as hell. Holy Records are some good stuff on there. But from, yeah, Holy uh, Records is really interesting. From Head Not Found, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce this one, but uh, Adorior, Adorior. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the one with the chick singer? R -I -R. Yes. Like Cutting the Sleeping. That album fucking rules. Yeah, that's wacky. I'll be right back, Paul. I gotta piss. Oh. Alright, you're back Death from Black. the piss. Mm -hmm. Alright, they got a cool band picture. And omnipotence. Uh, this one, it's hard to tell. You can't even tell it's a baby. It looks weird. <laughs> but it is. I guess I guess it's a, it's a little offensive because the painting's kind of bad. Yeah, I don't like it. Don't like it, eh? Well, let's like keep it. that uh, not liking on a roll because we're going to go into my <laughs> pick now. Fred not going to like this. Yeah, Fred is it's not a Fred you episode. Might, you, might, you might be surprised. Let's see. Ooh. All the messages during the week, and they're scary. <laughs> All right, so I uh, this week, my turn, my pick. My I turn. picked uh, Blood Revolt and Doctrine off of uh, Profound Lore Records. Who? Uh, 
and this came out in uh, 2010. <laughs> oh my god, it's been 13 years already. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, so they got what label mates Leviathan and Krieg. Isn't aren't Profound they from like lore. aren't they from like um like Portland or something? I don't know, Canada. Profound lore? No, they're from uh, right around the corner. Oh, okay. The uh, the guy who runs the label, uh, I see him at shows every once in a while. Oh, piss grave right here. Some portal too. Cool. Yeah, you got a bunch of big names on Profound Lore. Yeah, high quality label. Um, in terms of their releases, for me though, hit and miss. They do a lot of stuff that's not for me, but that's. Yeah, see, like crossover, crossover thrash right here. Quite a few Doom and Sludge bands as well. Yeah, and there's more experimental stuff on there too. That again, not really my thing. I I can't deny they're high quality because they are. Uh, but just musically, not for me. Well, if they put out this I album, use them with uh, prosthetic records who did like the Neckbeard Death Camp releases. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like prosthetic, profound lore. All oh, right, they're two different labels. But anyways, Blood right Revolt. Yeah. What? Uh, Paul. Yeah. Why? What? Why would you do this to us? Because I needed to show you guys something awesome. That one of the the best metal records at the in the 2010s, and it's still not uh, not spoken uh, for or two yet. I don't think anyone has touched this uh, in, I guess, innovation, uh, especially in war metal, because this is you know the same musicians, uh, you know, two out of three of them from Axis of, of Advance, and um, you know you got Vermin on um from sacramentary they just didn't have uh war this time that's what makes this a little bit more interesting because war was like doing all the writing or most of it for access of advance especially for obey um because that's when vermin and uh jay reed went on tour for, uh, for revenge in europe and you know during that time that's when vor was you know getting down the structures and uh, the riffing for obey so that's that's more I think of his brainchild in there because doesn't uh, Vermin just play bass in uh, Axis? Yep. I, I don't know if he did any writing, but yeah, he was on bass, bass yeah. and vocal. Yeah. Well, it's their you know their their brainchild because uh, you know Jay Reed is <laughs> listed as a very particular part of the band, a session drummer that no one can replace. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I guess with their time working together, you know, with Revenge, they wanted to come out with something, you know, in that same Axis vein, because they haven't had anything since, what, 2006 with Purify? What do you think that vein would be? What do you mean? Like, what is what is the Axis? Oh, man, it's just, it's like all the best parts of every metal genre put together and through the lens of war metal uh, with that extremity and um you know the grindiness of you know what war metal is but you know playing actual black uh black metal riffing death metal riffing and then also having doom sections which make access of events really stand out to me and like secondary uh, abolishment where you know they'll have the fast grinding blasting parts and they'll keep up the speed a lot but they know when to bring it down to make those uh those parts stand out a lot more you know and those parts are just like none of it's filler at all. It's all, all great riffs, but it's not all the same uh, type of riff that you're hearing. They're all different. So like with Revenge, you're you're getting kind of all the same sort of riffing, the same drumming all over it. With the uh, you know Axis and Blood Revolt, you can hear a little bit more variation in that, but they're not letting up at all. It's like a completely unrelenting album and shit. So do you think that? the difference between the music on Blood Revolt and the music on Axis would be like, because cause to me, I, I think the music on the Blood Revolt album is less less like hyper and less spastic. It, it's it's a little bit more normal in, in terms of like pacing. You know what I mean? I actually find that the music on the Blood Revolt reminds me more of Sacramentary Abolishment than anything Axis did after Strike. Hmm. Yeah. It yeah, feels yeah. like it's, I don't know, it, it just gives me that, that vibe. And conceptually, it almost feels like it's in the same world, too. Yeah, with the, you know, this the whole concept album with, uh, like Alan would say, like the eight chapters in it for each song going on. There's a, you know, progressing through a story. 
and I can I can see that a little bit more with like you know with Strike and uh, the albums before it from uh, Sacramentary more so than Obey List and uh, Purify. But you, but Dan, you're saying that with those albums that I listed, they're more like transitioning into things a little bit like there's more chaos going on, or or what do you like? This is a little bit more subdued. I, I think so. Maybe not the the way it transitions or the actually, yeah. I think it, a lot of, a lot of it has to do with the way it transitions into riffs and the and the kind of the speed that it's played at, and also the the riffs that are played here. They're not as wild and strange as um, a lot of the ones on the Acts of Advance. Uh, like at least the first two records. That's, that's interesting that Fred says um, that this kind of reminds him more of Sacramentary Abolishment and maybe the first. Uh, Axis album rather than the the later ones, because the later the later Axis albums are very different. They get more hmm. like dumbed down kind of, or, or there's just less to the riffs. Hmm. And it's like a little bit less to the albums. If, if, if they're less sense. complex, that, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely less complex. Like Strike is probably the most complex they ever get. And then they're still pretty wild on the list, but it's everything's more condensed on the list. And then as you go on to the last uh, two releases that they do, they're even more condensed. And this one, there's kind of more uh, variation to to Blood Revolt. Like, you get straight up, like, second wave black metal kind of stuff. You, and like you said, you get a lot of the Doom. And you get a lot of weird kind of in-between thrash stuff and, like, tremolo pick things that maybe you'd even remind you of, like, Mortuary Drape or something. Mm-hmm. And a lot of what they do, I, I feel like... Mm-hmm. With Blood Revolt, their their riffs have more to do with each other, more so than like Axis and Sacramentary, at least from what I can hear. Where those, you know, those bands and those uh, those albums that we're talking about, they the more the riffs are like on opposite ends of the spectrum, even though they're like you know transitioning right into each other. You know, mm-hmm. like it'll go from like a you know thrash sort of riff into like a like a chug into like a black metal mel- melodic riff. Whereas like this, they're all playing like you can hear like throughout the album. It sounds like there's parts repeating throughout it, like especially with like the the melodies in it too. And I was so disappointed though when uh, they didn't bring back that little drum fill that they did in the the second song, where it's like, you know, oh, are you, are you talking? It was just yeah. on the snare. Yeah, that part yeah, that, is so like, really sick. Industrial uh, part. Yeah, I wanted that to come. Like, there's so many moments where that could have came back as like a motif for them to, you know, do. Because a lot of the melodic lines on this, uh, on this album, like I mentioned earlier, like you know, they're coming back from uh, different songs and shit. And they, they also, you know, with the doom parts, and you'll hear like the clean guitars come up in here. Uh, I think in mm-hmm. maybe two songs or something. And um, yeah, it just seems like the whole album as and songs and riffs are way more similar than you know the rest of the projects where you're saying that you know from the very beginning of uh sacramentary and you know the first album of axis they're going you know crazy with the you know structures and how complex they're getting they're kind of refining it and refining it more as they go down um as a you know the albums pass and then here it seems like like the essence at least between uh you know vermin and jay reed yeah it's um because it, i it's hmm. go ahead because i think like vor was like the essential part of both sacramentary and axis you know lyric man riff um you know doing all the riffs and shit and you know structures you probably had a lot more like a heavier hand in there um more so than um you know the other guys i think at least from what i can tell without him here like you can you could tell he's not there yeah you can tell he's not there but that's, I, that's it, weird it's interesting it's like vermin vermin has the capability to do something like this and it's it's weird that they kind of hadn't done it in such a long time i mean at, when did when did uh acts of advance break up in 2006 i think yeah right after and then revenge has like at least two or three albums in between that time that they break up and this album comes out. So it's four years that, you know, that style, the like kind of hyper fucking grind, whatever you want to call it, hyper evil metal or whatever, this style comes back. And like, they, it's interesting that Vermin has the capability to do this. I mean, he's been the guitar player for Revenge, 
but you kind of mm-hmm. wouldn't have any idea that he would be able to uh, accomplish like an album like this. I, I think it's. A, it's I, I'm like, almost one, wondering one though if I'm almost wondering though if this is like leftover access material. Well, from what they're saying here, um, in an interview I read with uh, Alan, they're saying, um, you know, the interviewer asked him, Indoctrine is a truly unique piece. Uh, how did the Blubber Vault come about? Uh, what are the origins of the project and some goals that you wanted to achieve with it? And then he said that uh, Jay Reed contacted him and asked him if he would like to be a part of the new project with him and uh, Vermin because uh, Axis just ended and they wanted to create new music and push things in a different direction so it seems like they're kind of just starting fresh from when axis broke up you know because they're obviously hmm. touring and you know around each other and you know creating shit enough to you know come up with a whole new project uh, beside revenge you know yeah, and hmm. they they really did push the push the boundaries and go in a, a different direction with this um like if i were to have to rate this in the middle of like the axis and sacramentary i think i would uh I don't know, man. It, it goes like Strike, the two Sacramentary albums. I can't choose maybe the first one. And then uh, Distracting Stone, Blow Revolt, and then, you know, Obey, Purify, and List. I think that's how it would go. You put Strike over the first, the two Sacramentary Abolishment albums? Hell yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, I think don't necessarily like, agree, but I get it. I think it's peak peak metal. That's, that's as good as it gets. Oh, for me, it's uh, River. River will never be toppled by any of the uh, of the other well, ones. Well, but from my last again, listens, it just sounds like a lot more uh, alien and brutal death metal to me, especially towards the later tracks of it. So I'm like hearing it in a new lens where I don't really hear much of that going on from the rest of their discography, you know, across bands. So it's kind yeah. of like a you know sands on its own, but like Axis, it seems like where they wanted to go, and you know they just kept going on after that. I think for me, those first three albums are separated by such small, yeah, differences. Anyways, like I, I, I could easily see an argument for either of the two Sacramentary Abolishments albums or Strike as number one. It's, it, it's they're just so good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. This Buttervolt, it, it took me for a spin. I have had a journey with this album. <laughs> I know you've been messaging the week and you're like kind of bipolar with it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's entirely because of Alan's vocals and I'll, I'll say this. I don't like primordial. Um, mostly because of his vocals. I, I it doesn't, don't either. It, it doesn't do it for me. And it doesn't do anything for me either. Yeah. And, and when I heard in doctrine for the first time, um, and I heard his vocals, I grudgingly dismissed it because I knew I liked it from a songwriting standpoint, but with his vocals over it, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get past it. And I've gone back to it many times since it came out because I own a copy, right? And I know there's something there for me, but I haven't been able to, to make it work. Um, but I think this episode is what I needed it forced me to listen to it more and more and more and there are still moments where the vocals make me go Ooh, I don't know but I'm still human <laughs> <laughs> but I get it now like I I see what they were doing and now for the most part it works for me there's a couple parts. It's weird because the way some of his vocals sound is very old school doom metal to me sometimes. Yeah, I want to um, bring up um, and the the juxt just to uh, you know bring a little bit more of a precise point to uh, what you're mentioning right now with the old school doom metal. Like in the Terminus podcast, mm-hmm. they just reviewed the newest Primordial album, and they were saying that how the vocals reminded uh, them of, like, Messiah, you know, from Candlemass and that operatic, like, yeah. delivery that he's giving off, you know? So I think that's maybe what yeah. you were looking for. Because when I heard that, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's tracks, like, I think it was Bite the Hand, Purge the Flesh, where he's much more 
in line with what I would expect to hear. Uh, and those were the tracks that gravitated to more at first because it was more of a there, there's less of a, a contradiction but, yeah less of a sounds. range yeah but as it, yeah exactly but yeah after listening to it ad nauseum over the past week uh i think i finally get it i don't think it'll ever reach the levels of sacramentary or strike for me but it's it's solid and Alan's vocals. Fucking microphone I'm, fell off the desk. Oh, no, you what are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking metal, I, man. I, turn, I I turned my chair and the little cord went coink and then I looked on the floor. There's a mic. <laughs> he herniated his microphone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ouchie. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's I'm not where I used to be with this album. Before I'd be like, you know what? It's it's an album ruined by Alan's vocals. I, I don't I don't feel that way anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. I would still love to hear a version of this album recorded with Vermin or Vora's vocals or both. And I think that would be a, a stunning Axis of Advance album. But the experimentation on this does make it stand out as an incredibly unique album. And it's very polarizing. And I know that because I've been on both sides of that polarization. I hated it at first. Um... And I think I still have a bit more to go on this journey before I really, really can say I love this album. Again, mostly because of the vocals. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if I get there. But it's taken me 13 fucking years to get here. <laughs> no, you'll get there, man. Like, li- listen to the, like what this interview question says. It's like, the interviewer asks, It is rare in, uh, in a time when metal seems to have lost its bite, its darkness, its honesty, to come across something like this, the music compliments the lyrics and the vocal approach while at the same time subverting it um you know it's clean sometimes wild vocals over top pounding war drums and frantic brutal riffs nothing sounds like this nothing when you were working on or working to write and arrange this album did you envision it turning out like this and he said Mm -hmm. of course i'm not interested in doing something run of the mill or average what would be the point of aspiring to that I knew the three of us were more than uh, competent in making an album like uh, we have done. Not such a crazy theory, really, putting clean vocals over this kind of war grind, but for some reason no one has ever done it before. And yes, you're right, nothing sounds like this, and Doctrine is a very Machiavellian sort of record. It inspires fear instead of immediate affinity. A listener is more likely to get cold chills down his spine than tap his foot upon the first listen. A party record. This is not <laughs> a party. This record. I, I, I do. I do really appreciate that you can actually, for the most part, understand the lyrics on this, because when you're listening to Axis of Advance or Sacramento Abolishment, the lyrics are really cool and really interesting. But you need to read along, otherwise you're not going to know what the fuck's going on. Father, this not so much. <laughs> and just being able to hear what he's saying and what he's expressing. Uh, it's it's good. It's nice. You're actually able to understand the album without help. So that's definitely a, a plus for the vocals in that sense. Dan, what do you what do you think of this? What are your what are your thoughts? Because I know you heard this before me. I think you may have forgot about it by the time I showed it to you. Because I showed it to you, I guess a little bit later, right? Yeah. And when you showed it to me, you didn't really even know who Axis of Advance was at no. the time, right? No. Yeah. So we both kind of heard this during weird times. I think. I think I heard this before I was a fan of Axis of Advance, or before I gave a shit about them, and Paul heard it before he even knew who Axis of Advance was. That is and, wild. Um, yeah. That is such a weird route to get into this album. I, I yeah. can't imagine finding out about this album without knowing about the other bands. Yeah, I went backwards. And, and you know, <laughs> well, I, well, that, I that might have helped you guys, though, right? Because that was kind of my source of disappointment. I loved Sacramentary, and I loved Axis of Advance, and I heard this, and I'm like, oh. Okay, this is not <laughs> well, Axis or Axis Sacramentary. You guys didn't have that expectation. Yeah, I guess yeah. the way we entered it was, or at least uh, myself, like, you know, I came to this end and I already, I liked it. I, you know, it was challenging at first, and then I just came to grow and love this album as just like, you know, it's just peak peak metal to me. Honestly, it's, it's up there with the, you know, the strikes and and uh, you know everything like that. But, you know, coming deeper into, you know, the members, other bands, like Finding Axis after that, after Daniel showed me and Sacramentary Abolishment, it was like even a better fucking trip, you know, rather than, like you said, was a disappointment. 
Can, can you imagine if you heard Blood Revolt first and you like took the opposite journey to me? You're like, oh, I can't wait to check out Axis, and you listen to it. You're like, oh, uh. oh. <laughs> no, this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's the, quite the same thing because I only knew Revenge, and I th- this was during a time when I was playing in a kind of more metal-ish type band, and um, I was just checking out a bunch of stuff, and I remember going through like. Um, yeah, the Revenge catalog, and then finding, uh, oh, they, they did this band not that long ago, Blood Revolt. I think I had come across Axis of Advance, but I only heard Obey first, so I kind of assumed that Obey was, like, uh, oh, pretty much the same, like, as as, as Revenge. Because, mm. you know the way Obey sounds. I thought I it was just, sick. like, I thought it was just typical war metal. Mm. And then hearing Blood Revolt, I remember being, like, kind of interested in it for like a second but for the most part i was like i was like eh right away i, I kind of just dismissed it for whatever reason i don't even think i took any time to like listen to the riffs or or like try to understand the vocals i just like kind of knew what this album was and kind of poo-pooed it and then late maybe like years later paul asked me about this album and i was like yeah i know what that is and he's like, uh, I, I don't even think we even liked it that much at the time. You yeah, at the about, beginning, right? yeah, well, it was like at the band practices, I would, you know, we first initially showed it to you. We're like, we're like, ah, uh-huh, like, you know, listening to it together. And then, yeah. you know, later, like the weeks following, like we're like arriving to the band practice and we're like singing the fucking lyrics to each other because I, I couldn't stop listening to it at least. And I know you gave it a little bit more attention afterward. Yeah, there, there was a time where I was listening to this album a bunch. Well... I think, you know, in the past two years, two or three years, listening to Axis and Sacramentary and um, and the Blood Revolt album, like, all kind of bunched into one for, like, you know, past few years, just over and over again, these albums, and kind of getting an understanding of uh, what the, what they're doing, like, this war grind kind of thing, war metal kind of thing, but um, with all kinds of genres just, like, shoved in there. Yeah. It's great. And, like, yeah, like like they said in that interview, it, you could you could have easily gotten any vocalist to do black metal vocals or death metal vocals on this but yeah. uh, to get to get somebody to do to get the guy from primordial to do his vocals that people don't really like because i i don't really i don't really give a shit about primordial but um for whatever reason here these vocals are just so strange and it kind of helps that this album itself is uh is very strange you have all kinds of different sounds going on here you, you have like i think one of the later tracks you have um a song that, or a riff that sounds like fucking, uh, like Bethlehem, like something that would be on the Bethlehem album. The one's like, mm-hmm. and you have shit like that, and then you even have these like things that could be System of a Down riffs, <laughs> you know, where they're like, boom, yeah, you have these weird little like clean sections, <laughs> yeah, jung, jung. and then and then they blast over it, yeah, mm-hmm. and then you have boom, do, boom, do, 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 now, now deathmetal.org, I guess. They had a review for just Landline. And I, I know I mentioned before that was that website was a big influence on my development in listening to extreme metal. And I found a copy of Landline in a used bin, I think in Montreal. And I picked it up, and that's where I was hooked. Uh, it was just it blew my mind. But yeah, no, I'm still, I, I, I'm still beside myself that this is how you guys your path to access of advance was through blood revolt and that's just boggling to my mind i can't even imagine going in that order yeah but that, <laughs> that's the thing i mean i didn't even like i didn't even give these albums a chance when i first heard them i just kind of knew what they were mm-hmm. i think i think the first actual introduction to this kind of stuff would probably have been the distracting stone and then strike so those were the two that I actually listened to in full and, and, and enjoyed. The other ones I knew about, but just never really bothered to, you know, like get to know them. But yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you're actually going in like chronological order, yes. Blood Revolt might have been one of the first of these albums that I've heard. Yeah, no, that's cool. 
Yeah, some people Again, just get it, stuck uh, at revenge. They let, let you go in without those <laughs> expectations, right? Those that's kind of what threw me off. Yeah, so some people it's... do get stuck at revenge, and and I I don't get it. I mean, if you're if you're interested in metal, I I don't understand why you would why you would be stuck at revenge. There's so many bands like I mean, maybe there isn't. Are there bands like Revenge? Besides like Damar or something? They probably put on a hell of a show though. It's fucking just Jay Reed's performance and. Yo, you know, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they do. Like they're a good band. They're, you know, a, a lot of people just don't really like the, the 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 kind of monotony that they do and i mean i don't i don't, I don't, I don't hate them for it <laughs> i was gonna say with like revenge like you know the production and everything kind of you know the riffing you can hear it all kind of being you know monotonous whereas like this one there's a lot more like clear production on on the guitar riffs so you can actually hear what they're doing i wonder if this was what <laughs> you know if they weren't able to do that in revenge or if like we're not listening close enough <laughs> I think when it comes to revenge, for for me, when I go to revenge, when I want, when I want to hear something that's just over the top, and they do that well enough, but I find that when I want to, when I want to hear that style, I tend to go to the Filipino band Dave Fago. Oh yeah, because I find that they have that extra level of unhinged. Revenge kind of gives me almost like an industrial vibe. Yeah, me too. And that's that's fine. I think that's that's their aesthetic. I think that gives it more than the music necessarily um but uh i i find dave fago just sounds particularly unhinged and over the top a bit more than revenge uh and despite well, i think people will fight me on this but i find there's a lot more variance between dave fago's albums than revenge does but i mean that's my take we got your back <laughs> is there a lyric on here that says i am white phosphorus yeah Dude, I love, oh, yeah. I love, yeah, I love that part. Uh, uh, I think that's a, the title track on there where they're, where he's just saying what he is. He's like all the fucking bomb chemicals and shit. He's chemicals, yeah, he's bomb chemicals. <laughs> yeah. That, but, uh, that was, that was like the more spoken word part, I think, right? No, he's like screaming that shit. <laughs> I have total fucking power. <laughs> which, which one am I thinking of then? There's a part where it's, uh, whatever, anyways. Is that one of the ones we're listening to today? Or, well, I forget which ones we've decided to listen to. Uh, I wanted to listen to, um, you know, in Doctrine and mm. the third song. I think you mentioned it earlier. Uh, what was it called? Bite the Hand, bite, Purge bite of the Flesh. Hand, yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, but maybe we can listen to the third song first, uh, Bite the Hand, Purge of Flesh. But I just wanted to mention before, I love these vocals and they got me into later Primordial because I've only heard uh, like a Journey's End. Uh, from mm-hmm. them, but then I kind of went into their later albums, and coming to find out, uh, Redemption at the Puritan's Hands, like, probably my favorite of what I've heard so far. Fucking great, like, once I, you know, got the acquired taste for it from Blood Revolt, hearing this is, you know, it's it's nothing nothing now. It's just great. Like, I, I actually look forward to hearing his vocals and shit. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, listen to that track. We'll be right back. Yeah! No, 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 fucking life. No, no, no. 
God damn, that's a fucking good song. Fred, that does not suck. Don't say it. <laughs> so, so we're not going back-to-back songs? We're going to... No, we'll, we'll take a break in between them. Oh, okay. Are we live again? Yeah. That sucked. You motherfucker. He told you not to say that. How come you can't listen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never listen. He does us. <laughs> But yeah, this is one of the highlight moments in the album. It's like right before Definitely. this guy is gonna go crazy. I think at the at the pivot of the pivotal point is um, my name in the blood across the sky. That's like when he's about to go down and do the shit. But here he's like he's done thinking about it and he's you know just going into action. Fuck it. And this one's <laughs> just riftastic too. It has that like. I don't even know how to describe it. Is that kind of a destruction type riff? Because I feel like I've heard it on the list. That riff that's like. Yeah, it definitely gives me like a black thrash kind of vibe with that. And they're just like. Really fast. Yeah, and the way that they play with the fucking blast beat over it is like. It brings it to a higher level. Yeah, and Fred identified the Celtic Frost ishness of that like cowboy riff. Spaghetti frost. Yeah. yeah. And then the fucking how they go into that the huge doom section. They just start off with this the the hi hat going off and the drums by itself, and then it's just like a sick like do 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 boo. And they just like keep going with that into this like clean guitar part that's just like I don't yeah, I don't before, know before the clean guitars kick in. That part especially reminds me of Sacramentary. 
Yeah. And it's like, I like it. yeah. And like, it's just like that part just gets like so transcending. Like you could feel this guy like on his fucking knees, like pleading and like <laughs> has this, uh, idea in his head that he's actually going to be carrying out and shit. It's, it's a phenomenal part in the record. I think I forget which song it is that, uh, has that next. I think it, yeah, that, um, my name in, uh, Blood Across the Sky also has one of these parts too where it's uh, just clean and I don't know it's just like transcending uh, just like this uh, this metal and shit and like making this like fleshing it out more like this uh, concept and like yeah what do you think of it Dan? Yeah some of those Dooms parts like they, they reminded me of a few kind of like Doomish bands like um you ever heard of a band called Fost Coven? Yes yeah, kind of reminds me of Wings Boss is Coven. Awesome. Hey, it's let's like... bring it back to Barbarian Wrath. Come on, this is my <laughs> <laughs> my yeah, jam. It, yeah, it's like Black Doom kind of stuff. It, uh, again, you probably know who this is too, Paul. It kind of reminds me of um, Burning Witch a little bit. Hmm. Um, and then maybe that super group, the Teeth of Lions, Rule the Divine. I never actually and I heard think them. They're they're kind of interesting. I, I I think Alan says something like, "There's a line in here." Where he says the teeth of lions, something. Uh, I, I'm wondering if that was like intentional, like because there's all, all these like doom parts in there, but probably not. I don't know. It, it, it's just kind of weird that it reminded me of that band, and he just has a line about teeth of lions. Well, they're saying like in the primordial one uh, on Terminus that there was like certain references to like other bands in his lyrics, so I don't see why not. You know, same guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, they they did say that. I mean, that's kind of an obscure one. I wonder if they if he would. Well, I mean, he, maybe. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he knew you know Jay Reed and you know from Axis and everything and enough to you know um, make a project with them. So I'm sure he knows like really obscure shit too. Was it maybe, maybe Crowbar would fit in with some of that stuff? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. that clean part. Mm. And I, I was always or go ahead, Fred. No, I was saying, was it Alan that wrote the lyrics on this? I didn't, uh, I didn't actually read up on that. Yeah, so I was gonna get into this right here. It was like, um, I always wondered, like, how the fuck did they go about this? And you know, this interview question wrapped it up nicely. Uh, they said, being the three of you guys uh, exists on, uh, you know, two different continents. How did the writing work? And they said, Chris and Jay Reed uh, wrote the music together, and they sent me CDs and MP3s. He's all worked on the concept and the lyrics on my own. Then he flew over to Canada just as they were nearing the f- uh, nearing the end of recording the drums and the guitar tracks, and uh, they worked on like the overdubs and the mixing, and uh, recording the vocals all together because they needed that uh, band feel, you know, rather than being like a sort of internet project, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I think that just makes it even more, you know, has some profound lore with it, you know. <laughs> so does, I see what he did does, there. <laughs> does Vermin do vocals on this too? He might do maybe some backing, yeah. if anything. I don't think so, though. Not significantly. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's all just Alan going off like he has even such during, a big even range. Even during the like, even during the black metal parts. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's all Alan. I always assumed that, but I I, I thought maybe it was um, Vermin as well, because because it does sound like the way vermin sounds sometimes. yeah i don't see why they wouldn't do it but i mean to me it, it only sounds like one vocalist like not they're not layering anything i don't think no no i don't think there are any layers here yeah and like you know we keep bringing up like this this is uh are you you're gonna say something fred uh no oh, okay i'm thinking i'm thinking something but i haven't formed it into a sentence yet i uh, knew you were gonna think something <laughs> yeah i heard it <laughs> but um yeah, there's like other waves <laughs> fucking revving up. Yeah, <laughs> there's other uh, you know bands that you know don't don't sound like this because the vocals are like such a unique uh, presence to uh, the whole album and band itself. It's like I have like two that I can name that sort of give off this vibe, but this first one is in a different extremity, not so much in war metal, but uh, brutal death metal. Uh, Daniel, you know this one, uh, Wicked Innocence, the Worship album? Sure. Yeah, where he has, like, these sort of, like, singing vocals in there. But he also, you know, is doing the fucking, the death metal, brutal death metal vocals in there. That's a great album, too. I should, uh, I'll be a pick later. And, uh... Well, his vocals almost sound like Soundgarden or something. Yeah, he's going, like, grunge, like, 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 singing. Yeah, he sounds like a grunge singer. Here, Alan sounds like some kind of... 
Yeah, he's like he, Celtic storyteller. Or something. Yeah, he's like an orator because he's like going on rants and like having little like like talks to himself and shit in here. Mm. And, and, and yet uh, the the lyrics work so well with every part, every access, section. With this with angry the access Irishman. of advanced kind of dystopian concept that they have all the time, right? It, it works with it. It blends in with the rest of their projects. Yeah. Because, like, he, they also mentioned in this interview, they're like, oh, the album's a concept. Uh, it plots a man's ascent from alienation to martyrdom in eight chapters through religious indoctrination, madness, to bomb making, serial killing, and ultimately revenge. It could be said anywhere else or anywhere in the world. All you need to do is turn on the news and you can see the inspiration. I don't see any. Uh, or, yeah, that's pretty much where he ends it. You, you, you know, just turn on the news and you'll see. So people doing some shit like this, and you know it's kind of or turn more on the current. News, that's your inspiration to do things like this. Yeah, and it's just you know current more so than like, uh, you know a futuristic album where Axis and uh, Sacramentary, um, where their lyrics lie a little bit more. It's an interesting point of uh, of kind of like a real life situation where people do things like this, kind of try to become a martyr and uh, have their like manifesto or something like that yeah it, and it, you know it, in a way when it's put that way just turn on the news just look around you in that way it's kind of surprising that more people aren't uh <laughs> fucking insane murderers i mean i could see i could see how it would be really easy for some people to be like insane murderers you know what i mean yeah like on the news they'll tell you don't mix these ingredients uh this is how you can make a bomb and then in here, uh, he's like saying all the chemicals that make bombs and shit. So it's all, you know, all the information's out there. It's just, you know, surprise people aren't, uh, you know, taking it into action. But there's probably a lot more that we don't hear about, too, you know? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot we don't hear about. But, um, but uh, yeah, as far as the sound goes, you know, th- this is pretty obvious to say. But, yeah, it does sound like madness. The music sounds like madness. The vocals yeah. and the lyrics are really, uh, like intuitive towards that like i when i when i was listening to this maybe the 15th time this week it goes by (laughs) such a breeze like i I just really love this album and it's like i I can't listen to it without finishing it you know i just it feels just so incomplete because at the end he's like this is the end like fucking (laughs) documentary yeah then you got the martyr brigade after but um to to quote uh frazier uh with this first word (laughs) Um, yeah, this album and the lyrics are abundantly human. It's an abundantly human record. And these vocals are, like, required to be here to feel that. You can't get this sort of emotion and, uh, concept across with, uh, fucking, you know. Satan. Yeah. Like, yelling and the death metal. You know, I got nothing, no problems with that. But it this just feels way more human. Like, yeah, sure, you can talk about being insane and a death metal growl but you know to actually feel the humanness of it in here like you could feel the derangement of the protagonist and it was funny because alan was saying like yeah with like the lyrics we didn't want to do the run of the mill thing where you know they're talking about goats and it's kind of like cartoonish and shit (laughs) or this is like gas masks yeah and this is like way more real you know i wonder what a second album would have been like well, they're saying that they have fucking two songs that are just for themselves, and they <laughs> didn't release them, and then they were planning on doing, like, live shows, but they're just so busy with everything else that they're doing, you know? I, this was, like, a, a... I don't know if it was, like, a passion project, but definitely, like, just something, uh, you know, just creative, because, you know, they're all... We're lucky we got this. Yeah, because, yeah, this is, you know, one of my favorite records of all time, honestly, in, in metal and shit. Yeah, yeah, but maybe, in the maybe words of the Sisters of Mercy, I want album. more. <laughs> what was that, Dan? I said maybe it's better they don't have a second album. I mean, it, it feels complete the way it is here. Yeah. You know. Because it, it's still, it, it, it's it's similar to Axis, but um, it's 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 really got its own identity musically, too, not just with the, with the lyrics. Well, it has that same, you know, spark and flame that Sacramentary had from each album to access from each album where none of it really sounds the same it's all progressing and evolving um you know along with them and you know this is just another example of uh you know a different direction that they wanted to take with uh 
you know, sound that they can manipulate at that will pretty much. Yeah, I kind of touched on this earlier, but it, it's interesting to see that that vermin really does have like the capability, like what he what what he's capable of when, uh, you know, when he wants to. Mm-hmm. He's capable of making something like this. We know what Jay's capable of. Every album. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But there's there's something about guitar playing that kind of like paints a, a whole different narrative. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, on that note, let's listen. To, let's listen to the second song I I chose. Uh, yeah, we're doing two songs because this album's that fucking good. I couldn't pick between the two. So the next song is uh, "In Doctrine," the self-titled track. Uh, it's the sixth sixth song in the album. Uh, we'll be right back. Oh, wow. 
All right, we're back again from listening to Indoctrine. Here I am once again, feeling lost, but now and then. I am. White butter. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. I had it playing on Bandcamp. I couldn't turn it down. It was like blaring. In my oh head. shit! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this. Go ahead. Hang on, guys. We've never done two songs before. Do I have to say it sucks for both of them or just the first one? No, this time you say that ruled, dude. Oh, uh, that was that ruled. There you go. That that'll be the the new one for the second song. <laughs> <laughs> I like Fred it. peaked when he said ruled. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like uh, fucking sorry, dead. You were saying the second song, man. I couldn't choose in between the two. Uh, I would listen to the whole album if we had that much time, but. <laughs> yeah like i don't know this one had a lot of riff uh, variety on it too like dan yeah, says uh Riff-O-Rama. yeah bethlehem, bethlehem riff. then it had a alt rock riff yeah where it's almost system of a down the toxicity of all city it's funny though because this is the uh song i confused with the the next song because i said the uh when they were mentioning the different ingredients for the explosives uh, on the next song year zero where he's saying semtex packed i grind the prince mm-hmm. etc et that's when he's like it's a slower spoken word section aluminum and <laughs> can't say uh, aluminum like how they do aluminum 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 yeah it's like how they say uh, uh, what's it called uh, nike nike <laughs> nike <laughs> Like the favorite element, it. Pionium, from Space Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> Grind to powder TNT. <laughs> well. So yeah, this fucking, this song, so great. I, I think it, how you mentioned on the last, uh, the last track we listened to that it had like the catchiest riff on the album, but I think that Bethlehem one is, especially how they bring it back at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, none of the riffs are like, too too technical there, there actually is like one on a different song it sounds like a mithras riff or something hmm. it's like a tech death riff that's like all high hmm. i don't know they, they kind of just go all over the damn place don't they yeah yeah it's, it's remarkably eclectic i think the the focal the the focus on alan's vocals kind of takes away people's ability to realize how eclectic the album from a songwriting perspective actually is I think the guitar tone kind of make makes that uh makes that same thing too where it's like it, it it's really dist- it's such a distinct guitar tone it kind of makes everything bleed together where where you're not hearing distinct things yeah in, in a right. certain kind of way and to um i forgot to mention when i was talking about the two uh bands that uh, remind me of the the vocals on this album um the second was uh evocator um Nick's band from Hessian Firm, where he uh, that album um, Ancient Cataclysm, he does uh the vo- does vocals like that on um, on the second track on the album, where it's just like that clean, really clean uh, vocal over the, um you know over the extreme you know metal that's going on and shit. Um, you see, yeah, Tremor, Tremors of Poseidon, that song at the at the very beginning it goes off and does those kind of allen vocals over over the music and shit even though it's like you know death metal going on in the back that's yeah, it's, it's you interesting. It evocator yeah evocator yeah i haven't actually i haven't actually heard them yet yeah apparently it's a it's a one-man band and 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 nick just does the the vocals for it what did you say the album was called uh ancient cataclysm cool i'll give it a listen yeah this one is sick came out last year but dan do you remember that at all like how how nick yeah yeah it? uh yeah, um, Terminus uh, reviewed that album. I was actually listening to it right now just to refresh. Yeah, Nick's a crazy vocalist. Yeah, he, just, he's he goes like, all over. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's singing and then he's uh, doing the black metal stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's like going like full corpse grinder and shit. <laughs> After, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's the pretty insane. Yeah, those are like you know the Wicked Innocence and the Evocator are like definitely two releases that have vocals that are up to par with. Um, blood revolt and uh actually pulling it off um i'm not even sure if there's any bands that don't pull it off uh with this sort of extreme style and having this kind of vocals over it 
I would compare the vocals to um, Nelly Furtado. <laughs> she had that song, I'm Like a Bird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a bird. I want to fly, fly away. away. Ah, yeah. I don't know where my home is. <laughs> I don't know where my soul is. Soul is. I am like a, like a bird. Like a bird. <laughs> I am like a bird. <laughs> yeah, see, there's there's a little bit of a comparison there to be had. Yeah. Not, not totally retarded. <laughs> so n- now what I'm wondering, though, is should I go back to Primordial? Am I missing something there? Yeah. Like, I, 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 know, I know I liked the earlier albums before it was all... Um, croony but like i know people love the gathering wilderness and i used to own it and i sold it it should i go back to it i think so if you're getting more attuned to his vocals in here go for it because you know it took me some time to acquire it but once i did and i went to primordial from there and heard redemption at the puritan's hand i fucking fell in love with it like this is an album that i really love but I think I got to go into uh, the Gathering Wilderness because I've only heard uh, uh, Journey's End uh, to Nameless Dead and uh, Redemption at Puritan's Town. Hmm. Plus, Alan's a cool guy and he's got a podcast. Yeah, he had the g- guy uh, Chuck right from Harry's Kingdom on there. A yeah, bunch and of guys. he's a big fan. And he's a big fan of Holy Terror. So there you go. And Terminus yeah. did an interview with them too. Yeah, but the the black metal guy didn't ask about Blood Revolt. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it do a part two that's right <laughs> and do it again <laughs> <laughs> call him back yeah well, I'm gonna dive back into Primordial one of these days and, uh, I'm gonna dive into the stew click some more <laughs> but yeah um, <laughs> do you guys want to <laughs> give your, your last impressions on this album it was let's one first. see a one let's a two see. a three a three. There kind yeah, of is some. Um, okay. There kind of is like. Go down. Not generic riffs, but there's the Blood Revolt riff, where it's, it's the tremoloing parts that go boom, do 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 so if it's generic, it's generic for this one album only. That's what I'm saying. It like every song has like you know that concentrated like sound in their their the way they craft the riffs and shit, and they bring back certain melodic lines uh, throughout the album. You know, not just leaving out the one song. You know. Yeah, even either even the grind riffs on here are all really catchy, and like everything here is just really catchy. Yeah, like if Jay Reed can do the same drum roll for a bunch of bands, why can't they? Use the same sort of. And why can't and Sonny lines. have his kid? <laughs> why can't they have the same sort of guitarists and melodic lines uh, throughout an album? You know. Yeah, I, I think it's just this album is just a little bit hidden by Alan's vocals, to yeah. the point where, you know, it, it's going to turn people off, like it did all of us at some point. But uh, beneath, beneath, not just beneath that, besides that, like. The way the way all the riffs are written and the way all the lyrics are kind of crafted within that, um, I don't know, man. This is just like uh, an excellent fucking album, one of one of the best. Yeah, and that's that says it well. Like Alan's vocals kind of obscures the album. People hear it and they're like, "What is this juxtaposition of his vocals against this crazy war metal kind of?" sound that's 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 what i got but some people the even day, get thrown at off the the, <clears throat> at the oh, end yeah. of the day it helps it though yeah i was gonna say some people even get thrown off from distracting some vocals so you know yeah, but the, those are those though. are fucking weird so they're, it's they're like, weird it's but they weird. but they match too right like it's oh! it, it, they're, they're still extreme <laughs> metal they're still extreme metal vocals the and child <laughs> like <laughs> We're com- we were comparing Alan's Ow, vocals to Candlemass on here, so yeah. Paul, you're making me laugh too hard. Jesus, <laughs> the child. Now he's gonna go for surgery again. I know <laughs> my dissolvable stitches <laughs> have dissolved. They've dissolved. Oh, right. <laughs> oh dear. 
the child. <laughs> Do like the alien oh. shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in, in Strike, where it goes like. <laughs> <laughs> they do that in uh, River of uh, Korkon, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. I think people could get thrown off from any type of vocals on, on uh, that are on an album, you know, but I, I like them there and I can appreciate them and they can grow on me. More so than me growing on an album without vocals, you know, like an instrumental album. I don't know, those kind of just bore the fucking shit out of me. Versus like, you know, something with the eclectic vocal that kind of guides you through um, an album like this one, you know, does with the whole concept and lyrics that you can hear along with it. And changing the dynamics along with each part. And, you know, going from transcending parts to just maddening rants. To just like literally losing his fucking mind, screaming and shit. Like it's it's just to me perfect. It goes along with this music perfectly. And you know, mm-hmm. how we mentioned on the Holy Terror episode, you can just focus on Keith Dean's vocals the whole time and miss what's going on with the instrumental. And you can even listen to just the guitar going on in the instrumental and miss what's happening on the bass, miss what's happening on the drums. You have to like listen to each part individually. But I think I've listened to this enough times, especially this week, like in a row, where I can hear it as a whole now, and it's just like fucking, it's a masterpiece, honestly. Yeah, it, it's it, it it like presents itself as a gimmick album, but I mean, maybe it kind of is, to some extent. But behind that, it's just one of the best. Yeah, it's not relying on. I don't. On it. I don't. I don't think it. I don't no, think it presents no. itself as a gimmick album. I think people interpreted it yeah, as a gimmick album. Yeah, I think that's sure, definitely. Sure, a, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a better way of putting it. Yeah, because it definitely doesn't depend on like it's not like they're playing revenge, and having the vocals like this. You know, they're actually, you know, I they're not playing so much stuff that sounds like Axis. They're not playing too much stuff that sounds like revenge either. You know, it's like a, a middle ground where it's like interesting revenge riffs going on. You know, rather than just the you know regular black death riffs. Yeah, I, I think. Like I remember in the uh, in our last episode for visceral evisceration, I mentioned that there was that um, contradiction between the album cover and what the music actually sounded like, and then people who expected either one were kind of disappointed. I I think it's the same thing that curses this album. People who are into uh, war metal listen to it and hear alan's vocals and go fuck this is not what i want to hear and then people who like alan's vocals listen to it expecting primordial and hear you know sacramentary and they're like what the fuck it's exactly doing? what somebody's comment said on youtube they said this yeah. isn't this isn't uh like we're, this isn't war metal and this isn't anything akin to no they said this isn't black metal and this isn't anything akin to primordial he's like this sucks it's like dude shut up yeah so I mean, grow a brain. I, I know it's like yeah, super cliche, to, super cliche to say, but like you have to go into the album with an open mind, and I didn't for years, and now I finally have. I like it. Go into this album with an open ass. I <laughs> hate, I hate saying this, but Paul was right. There you go. Oh, I feel so. I need to take a shower now. Cut <laughs> <laughs> <Kinda> bad. <laughs> oh, I feel dirty for saying worry. that. I'm going straight there after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, God. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, fucking phenomenal album. I'm, I'm glad I finally got around to picking it. Uh, I'm sure Dan would have picked it if I haven't. Uh, if I yeah. hadn't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, I think that's uh, that's it. Oh, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>